Welcome to the Friday edition of Wands World and you can see I'm not in my kitchen I'm not going to be cooking today largely because I made a uh, cottage pie a few days ago and I've already shown you how to make cottage pie so I'm not going to repeat that I will, here's a picture of one just a reminder to you in case you've forgotten that this is something that many many English people called shepherd's pie that is it's a meat base um, with some onions and other vegetables maybe carrots and peas perhaps and then a layer of mashed potato on top instead of pastry and then baked in the oven until the top is nice and crisp and golden brown that's one of my favorites I do it all the time I vary the meat sometimes I put uh, uh, steak and kidney in there um, sometimes I put pork in um, sometimes I put lamb in there very rarely lamb because it's very hard to get and <laughs> I don't want to grind up lamb from a very expensive butcher but shepherd's pie is made with lamb because it's made by shepherds right so if you're going to make a beef based pie you could call it cowherd pie or you could with pork call it swineherd pie but generally speaking if you want to be pedantically correct shepherd's pie is made with lamb cottage pie is made with an other kind of meat normally beef so I made a cottage pie with interestingly a kind of sofrito like I made for my ragu a la bolognese um, that is onions celery and carrots because that's what I happen to have still <laughs> the celery is still holding over from my Italian sauces of several weeks ago because I don't use celery very often and I had some carrots and I added some leeks as well so it was a nice pie and that um, lasted a good long time so I don't really have anything in the way of cooking to talk about I hope by Tuesday I will be back in the swing of things but I thought for a long time and I thought well I really have nothing to say I mean I've been doing these videos twice a week for over two and a half years and just for the moment I've kind of run out of ideas I, I, I'll pick up again no doubt and at some point I will just stop maybe at the three year mark um, with my uh, Book of Days Tales blog um, which I will um, put in the uh, in the references down below uh, may also flash something on the screen if I feel like it anyway that one I, I ran every day for six years but I eventually just kind of ran out of ideas and that's sort of what happens well I'm kind of running out of ideas and so I thought I'd, r I'd think about nothing and that's an important topic so let's start on that score Now I've mentioned before to you <clears throat> that I have a, several subscriptions. I have a Amazon Prime video uh, subscription. I have a Netflix subscription because I don't absolutely work flat out all the time. I, I do most of my best writing in the early hours of the morning. 
usually sometime between um, uh, one, two o'clock and uh, six or seven o'clock. Usually then I go out for a walk or a bicycle ride, come back, I do more work on different things. I've, I've got a conference coming up and I need to put together some PowerPoints for that. And Sometimes I, if I'm teaching, I, I put together my, my lectures and, and so on and so forth. So I've got a pretty full day. But sometimes I just like to goof off. And I may um, play Free Cell, which is a, a card game, a, a, like a solitaire card game. Um, I do that <laughs> a fair amount. It only takes me about five minutes to win a game, so I'll do a couple of games. And sometimes I just want to watch a, uh, something diverting, a movie perhaps, or a YouTube video or something like that. And I find that the great bulk of movies and TV dramas and so forth trigger me badly. And they trigger me because I don't like betrayal. I don't like violence. Um, I don't like misunderstandings. <laughs> uh, all, uh, no doubt, because of my personal history in life. You know, like I've been betrayed by people. I've been misunderstood by people. I really dislike violence in 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 um, my actual like day to day life. So I don't want to go on the screen and see more of what I don't like in my everyday life. So I, I've got into this very bad habit of starting to watch a movie and when things start going bad, which is usually in the first five or ten minutes, then I just get to see just how bad they're going to be and then I cut to the last ten minutes and I see how it's all resolved and then that's it. So, so there's not much of a not much of a movie. I don't. I just don't like this uh, having things go wrong and then having them fixed. And and it's a it's a plot that is just so ubiquitous. It's everywhere. I mean, it's all you ever see. You don't ever see the old-fashioned version of the Shakespearean tragedy where things are sort of okay and then they get worse and then they get even worse and then eventually they get so bad that everyone dies. <laughs> you know, like Hamlet, for example, or Macbeth. Uh, you know, you know in a Shakespearean tragedy that the, that the person the play is named after is going to die at the end. And what you're going to see in the course of the play is how that person's faults undo their fate so that they end up dead. And everyone says, wow, that was good. Yeah, Romeo and Juliet fall in love and it doesn't work out so they both die <laughs> in a complicated way. Wow, what a great drama. You know, we don't do that anymore. Now we have boy meets girl, boy falls in love with girl, things go badly wrong they misunderstand each other or something or other or they somehow manage to betray each other and then it all gets turned about and it's right and they end up happily together. That would be the equivalent of the Shakespearean comedy where everyone gets married at the end. You know, tragedy, everyone dies, comedy, everyone gets married. And so we've become enamored of, of that you know, everyone lived happily ever after trope. And I just don't like it. Um, I mean, I'd rather not, I'd rather not have things go bad in the first place and then I wouldn't have to worry about them getting better. So, one of the things I've been tinkering with is how do I write a novel where there's no tension, where there's no drama, where, the, where everything's just ordinary. Well, my first thought is that that would be really dull, that nobody would be interested in it, because that's kind of like everyday life. And it's one of the things I was thinking about when I was thinking about how I interact with my friends, um, now mostly on Zoom because they're in different 
countries or different continents or whatever. But I used to have uh, Zoom meetings for about just, uh, almost three years when the pandemic was at its highest um, because my friends in England who are uh, Morris dancers and you know it's a form of traditional English dancing that I've written about um, and I, I participated in for a very long time and my, my friends who I danced with most when I was at uh, Oxford University and, and subsequently toured the whole world with them I've organized tours with them so I'm you know kind of an an old, <laughs> an old git <laughs> uh, now, but I've got a lot of friends that are my my age or roughly my age. Some of them are older, a few of them are younger, and we got on Zoom, and we would talk for yeah, about two hours, and it was the equivalent of meeting at a pub after practice night. Now, I could have recorded those sessions. You wouldn't be in the least interested because they're not a they're not really about anything. They're just us getting together and saying, hi, you know, how's things going? How, how's your son? Uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just, it, it's, it's okay for us because we've got a history. You know, we go back, well, 50 years, um, most of us. And, you know, there's going to be times when we say, oh, do you remember when? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but also, do you remember when? You know, it's just not interesting to anybody outside of our group. And, yes, there's no drama, there's no tension, it's just ordinary. Well, I remember at one point... Um, Jerry Seinfeld saying that that his show Seinfeld was a show about nothing and he even pitched it both indirectly as a show about nothing and even in the show itself he and his buddies decide to write a show about nothing to pitch to a TV um, executives and and what they were really doing was commenting on the fact that Seinfeld is about nothing. Well, it's not about nothing. It, the idea is that it's about just ordinary life, which of course isn't nothing. But, you know, Jerry Seinfeld's stand-up act, it always has this, have you noticed that? You know, so when you turn that into a sitcom, instead of him standing up uh, in front of an audience and saying, have you noticed that? Instead, he's going to act it out. Well, there's only so many times you can do that. And it's pretty clear from Seinfeld itself. I haven't watched many episodes because um, it just bores me. Um, but there's character development. Um, the, the different... Um, uh, the, the main characters and, and the secondary characters all evolve in various ways. Um, some of them end up uh, with um, in relationships, um, and uh, every every episode has a theme, and that means it's got a beginning, middle, and end. So it's going somewhere. It's doing something. It's, it's a false, um, uh, it's false advertising to say that it's a, a show about nothing. It's just not a show that has very, very long story arcs like um, a long series like Doctor Who, <laughs> it's one of my favorites, um, or um, I don't know, maybe the Big Bang Theory, you know, where eventually most of the characters end up, um, the male characters, I should say, end up with girlfriends and end up married and um, so forth. So that's got an arc that takes, takes us over many, many episodes, and many uh, seasons. Uh, Seinfeld certainly doesn't have that, but it, it gets close sometimes. Um, where um, one of the characters in particular um, 
has some pretty serious relationships that last episode by episode by episode um, because they're fully aware that they can't just all be sitting in a cafe or in an apartment uh, episode after episode after episode just going on about their, their, their lives in the same way that I do when I go on Zoom with my Morris dancing friends. It's just not interesting. So th 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 there's my dilemma right now is, is trying to come up with a novel that really is about nothing. That's, but if I'm not careful, I'll end up emulating badly uh, James Joyce, for, you know, like Finnegan's Wake or something like that, where it's just like stream of consciousness. Um, it, it's already been done. What can I do that would be lacking in drama, lacking in tension, but would still be interesting? Don't know. <laughs> I, I can't imagine, but I'm, I'm continuing to try to imagine. So there's my um, Friday <laughs> offering to you about nothing. So if you like nothing, if you, if you like my musings, please like, please subscribe, tell your friends. Come back on Tuesday and probably I'll have some cooking for you. Because over the weekends I like to get a little bit adventurous, so I'll probably do something, but I have no idea yet. So have a good weekend.